Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome back to Let's Play Medieval for PlayStation 1. In the last episode, we found everything that we could in Cemetery Hill. And we went back to Dan's Crypt just at the last second so we could get some more supplies. Especially a life bottle that I will definitely need. So our next destination is the Hilltop Mausoleum. And that is exactly where we are going to go. And we enter this place immediately. And there's a book here that we can read. You are entering a house of pain. Rumors abound of evil doings in the secret catacombs below this very hall. And this is where the organ music starts to play. And we got these guys, these little imp-like creatures carrying torches. They will jump out of these caskets here, and you'll have to beat them up. And if they could actually approach me and try to hurt me, I would have an okay time here. But no, they just want to run all the way to the pews for whatever reason. So now we have to, are you just going to approach me finally? Are you just going to run all the way to that gate? I don't know exactly what you're trying to do. These enemies act a little weird sometimes. But we now have a club that will completely refill the uses percentage that we just have. And that is a clue for something that we need to do. I want to switch back to the short sword though because there's one more of these guys and I want to take them out. Hopefully not to dinner. And get over here. They're all running away from me now. I don't know why. That should be the last of them. So, some of these coffins have fallen off. Have basically come off due to the imps coming out of them. This hole in particular contains some gold that is easy to miss. And there is some sunlight or some light of some sort emanating from this one. You have to break this one with the club three times. Once you do that, you can drop down. Come on, Dan, drop down there. There we go. And you can drop down here. Watch out for sticky fingered imps. These seas will strip you down to your armored undies. And to break these, I believe we do need the club. And from here, we can just switch back to the short sword. And there's four of you, apparently. And I'm taking damage. Great. And you're just going to stand there while I... Oh, now you're going to start moving. Okay. Oh, and apparently you don't need the club after all. You can break those with your sword. Now these, you have to break with the club. These little stained glass spikes and if you can stand in the middle of the hallway you can take care of these things rather easily and that was worth it just to get that guy out of my hair now there are some enemies here I do wish to destroy them before I do anything else there's another one of you and we might as well just go ahead and take the energy vial you are here apparently All of you are here, apparently. And there's nothing else left to do but to take this rune. And once you take it, the floor starts collapsing. Thankfully, I have all of the stained glass spikes removed. So, that's a good thing. So now we have this thing that we can break now. You are going to be in the way. I don't want you to be in the way. Oh, you can't go past those. You're going to have to run back to me and get skewered. Ow. And we need to use the club to open a way over here. We don't want to go over here quite yet. I don't want to do that. Instead, 
we want to take this path. Don't do that. Instead, try to break all the things here. Good. Now, there is another rune that we're going to need here. Thankfully... We can easily get that rune. But I do want to clear out the path first. Before going to where we need to go, which is at the center path. So, we have a path to that, we just don't know how to open that up yet. And, new enemy, or rather, a new variation of an enemy we've already seen. These guys! These guys are not carrying a torch and have two free hands, and if they jump on you, they, they can take stuff away from you like your short sword. Don't let them do that. If, you, if your current weapon is taken away from you, like, if I have my short sword taken away from me right now, I will be equipped with the arm instead, and I'll have to use my arm to beat the guy to death. Also, we need, to, need the red rune for that. Let's see here. The stained glass demon is the master of the mausoleum. His wretched soul lies preserved inside a frozen glass heart. Shrouded in a veil of darkness beneath the mausoleum, you will find this pre-frozen menace. And... No. Ah. Oh, always catches me out. We're gonna beat him up, though. I want my sword back. And... By beating that guy up, I'll be able to take my sword, sword back and recover it. And there should be a rune here somewhere. There it is. And by going over here, we will be able to go back. There's also that room, but we will not be entering it quite yet. I will, however, have my sword ready in case any new enemies show up, which I'm pretty sure there might be new enemies. I'm going to run around just to find out, and thankfully the answer is no. Okay. Let's drop back down, because going through that door is the only way we're going to be able to re return to this area here. And now that we have the blue rune, we can run t towards this path and unlock it. How am I doing on health? Okay, 170. With the full life things. I want to take out all the enemies, and we can get the chalice, even though we haven't found it yet. Okay. Right there is a piece of sheet music. I want to get that. Yes, that's actually what that is. I also want to get the energy vial too, because, you know, refilling health. Something you should definitely do always. And once you grab the sheet music, be ready to run. Thankfully, I have this path completely filled. And if you need to jump, do so. That'll help you get past when the floor falls on you. And now, we can take this route again. And in case you're wondering, no, you can't go back up. Even if you make a running jump, you still can't go up. So you would have to use the path leading to the blue rune in order to get back. Now that we have the sheet music, one, we can give it to this dude, and we can get the chaos rune too. The would-be Phantom of the Opera longs to play a new tune, but he seems doomed to repeat the same chords of the spare over and over. So we have a, we have the, this going on. We can use the sheet music here as an, as an item to give this guy some music. Then he laughs, he disappears. And we get all this gold and the chalice. I believe we just got 150 gold. Also, I'm not taking the energy vials even though I could just as easily need them. Now, we still have one more of these to use. And we have that energy fountain there, but amazingly I don't have to use it. Let's go ahead and use the chaos rune here, the red rune. And there's this torch here. Believe it or not, you can move it across this path. And as you go across this path, you can get some more throwing daggers out of this chest. 
And you can get that copper shield in the corner right there if you feel like breaking the stained glass spikes and getting it. But what you really want to do is push this torch on a box all the way to the stained glass heart. By doing this, the stained glass heart will break and the four lights, red, blue, yellow, and green, will appear in the central room of the mausoleum. I want to equip my crossbow because we will need it. Once we go into this room and approach the four lights, we're going to have ourselves a boss battle. By the way, if you needed more bolts for the crossbow or more throwing daggers, you can buy them from the gargoyle where the Phantom of the Opera was. And by Phantom of the Opera, I mean the skeleton. So we are now told that this heart is the, is the same glass demon's only weak point. And when he floats in the center of the room to store energy, he will expose his heart. And you'll be able to shoot it. He has some attacks. He can throw stained glass shards at you, like so. He can attack you with a stream of stained glass shards from the middle of the room like he did earlier. He can jump around if you want to watch his shadow. And when he goes to the center of the room, be ready to just plug this guy with crossbow bolts. Now, the second attack, he can encase you in stained glass. But if you keep rapidly pressing the X button, you'll be able to get out of the prison of stained glass and you will be able to attack him again. And he has another attack that he can do, which damages no matter where you are. I don't know if you can defend that with the copper shield, but it's not like it does that much damage to begin with. And of course, he has a health bar in the center, uh, or rather the bottom of the screen. But as you can see, we emptied it. We plugged that stained glass hole full of crossbow bolts. And, and he is shattered. We do have the we do have the chalice, don't we? Yeah, we do have the chalice of souls. All right. So we now have everything. Time to grab the skull key. And with the skull key, we can open up more of the game. Time to go to the Hall of Heroes because the game automatically takes you to it when you complete the haunted mausoleum. It's the Hall of Heroes shopping mall. Bargain hunters should check out the ground floor. Well-to-do shoppers should check out the upper floor. That's where it's at. And once again, we are told to look around in the Hall of Heroes. I'm going to switch to the small sword so that way I don't accidentally use the crossbow. And it looks like Candy Tim isn't giving us anything else for now. However, this guy is now flashing. This guy is now glowing green. Ah, Fortis Guild. What's this I hear about that Archcad Zarod still being alive? Thought you killed the fella. <laughs> Never mind, you old warhorse. Better show him what's what, eh? I expect Johnny Zombie's a bit more of a handful than you remember. How are you doing for weapons? Here, take my war hammer. It'll smash anything and it won't fall apart like a club. I only ever get to use it cracking walnuts around this place. Well, we have a new weapon. A new melee weapon. And it won't fall apart like a club. We might as well take it. Nonsense, Fortescue. I won't take no for an answer. Knock a few heads for old Spaniard Iron Hewer, eh? And with that, we get the hammer. Where it's just like the club, and if you hold the square button down, you can create a small shockwave around you, which I'm pretty sure will do a good amount of damage to some enemies. Might be useful. In the meantime, 
we are pretty much done here. And we might as well go ahead and leave the Hall of Heroes. Now it is time to go back and head back to the cemetery because we have a door to open up. Might as well save our progress right now. Why not? That way we don't have to do that ever again. And from here, our save is successful. We can hold press down right to return to the graveyard and from here we should have another exit I guess we can replay the graveyard just to show that the door is indeed open and I could probably refill on health while I'm here Yeah, the game does not refill your health for you, so you do have to make sure that you refill it. Well, we might as well go ahead and test out how exactly this thing works. Oh, wow. I could do this all day. I could really do this all day. At least I don't have to go hunting for souls for the chalice anymore. And I got hit there, but that's alright. They're all getting smashed to bits anyway, and I'll be refilling that health before you know it. Still gonna have to explore and play through the game normally like I did the first time around, but that's alright. And I am just plowing these guys into the ground. That guy's dead. That guy is dead. And he got knocked eight feet in the air. Or is he also dead? No, I have the feeling he's still alive. Yeah, because he's he's gone he's walked far away from me now. If he's done that, he can't possibly be dead. But we are getting a little bit of he of gold. You can always go back to earlier levels for health and gold, which is always a good thing. Now we can open this door. Take a little bit of damage from some of the Zambos. And we are now back at the Angel Statue. I love how some of these guys just get knocked just 10, 12, 14 feet into the air just because you whacked them with a hammer. And I might as well just go ahead and open this just for the gold. I mean, no big deal. There we go. I should believe we should be able to use the skull key here. Living world lies beyond this gate. The master of the hilltop mausoleum has this in his skull key. I'm guessing you can't actually open the door here. I thought you could. So you can just do it on the map now. I thought maybe we'd be able to take a shortcut out of here, but apparently not. Oh, well. But I can do this. And just beat some zombies back into death. And I still miss out on gold, apparently. Let me see if I can get that. Because, hey, I'm over here. I might as well do it. 
might as well just go ahead and get the gold and whatever else is there just to well that's interesting I didn't know you could do that by smashing these hands with the, th the hammer you can get gold and what's this there is some gold here too what's going on with this that is wild. I did not know that this was even here either. Well, this was somewhat worth it. Interesting. Well, we might as well go over here and destroy all of these guys and just for the heck of it and just... Make sure that they don't give us any problems as we move around here. That is amazing. And these things keep coming back, too. There are hands everywhere. You can actually get some gold this way. I mean, it's not a lot. You only get one or two gold out of every single one of them, but... That's still pretty awesome. It's nice to see that you can actually do that. So in case you need that one little bit of gold left, you can get it. This is actually pretty fun. Okay. As much as I would like to smash more and more... Okay, there we are. We're, this is where we need to go. Okay. Finally got these guys doing things here now. Can we beat you up? Yes, we can. And I want to make sure that I get rid of all the enemies here before I do anything else. And... Even a few regular strikes from the hammer is enough to take care of these zombies. Really like that. And there's another copper shield in case we need it. I'm just going to go ahead and... Get this right here. Go ahead and refill on this. I'm going to beat you down just for one more of these. All right, I got him. Got that one last hand. So we got quite a bit of gold moving around here. And because we have the skull key, we can now take a shortcut to the next level, Return of the Graveyard. and play on from there next time. Let's let me go ahead and save my game first. Save is successful and we will be playing Return to the Graveyard with full health in the next video. Join me next time where we go to the graveyard again and see what else Zerok has cooked up for us. Until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care. Stay safe, and thanks for watching!